Welcome to Buddha School. I wanted to do a reboot of my talk about out-of-body experiences versus body and mind separation because there were some audio problems and maybe I'll add a few things as well. The out-of-body experience is one that is usually something that happens when somebody either goes into a coma has some sort of a trauma or shock experience, like maybe getting hit on the head or a car impact from a car accident. It can also happen, can be induced, self-induced in a type of meditation. Usually, if we're not that skilled at it and it can happen by accident, it'll happen where we're putting a lot of stress on the mind. So trying to hold it so still, uncomfortably so, that it's under so much pressure that the mind just slips right out and goes into an out-of-body experience. So putting the mind in some sort of a, a traumatic experience, holding it still or squeezing it in, in some way. And the out-of-body experience, when reported by those in comas are very, very interesting, where they can see their own body laying there in the hospital, and in some cases, they're able to not only hear what is going on in the room and see what is going on in the room, floating up over their body, hovering over their body, but also able to know what's going on outside the room, in the hospital, even some relatives making their way to visit them in the hospital and be able to see the, the suffering of their families and remembering everything that they say. In some cases, they even get an opportunity to meet with deceased relatives and have conversations and receive even some guidance. So it's very much a situation where people get this semblance of things continue after death and in some way I'm still me after death uh, although leaving the body and free of the pain of having a body and free of human like emotions there's still a sense in these out of body experiences that it's very much me the same person uh, or the same sort of essence that was there it still feels like me in a lot of ways, just uh, more peaceful and more alert. And these out-of-body situations are actually quite alert, right? really aware, really alert of our outer uh, surroundings and what's going on, and even the ability to have uh, telepathy and some psychic experiences happen when not limited by the functioning of the human body. So that is the out-of-body experience and there might be some more things that I'll allude to as I keep uh, talking about it. But an, an interesting uh, thing here is that the body-mind separation, this is something actually very different and is a vipassana or insight meditation experience primarily. And this is an experience where we're not out of body looking back at our body and interested in outer phenomena, right? Seeing everybody in the room and hearing what they say. That's still the mind out projected in the world. But in the Vipassana experience or the insight of see, this is seeing that the body and mind are two completely different entities. We get a sense that the body is just a physical mass and the mind is that which is able to sense that or know that the physical body is, is present, is there. And so there isn't like a physical distancing between the two, but the mind and the body can be clearly distinguished as two separate entities in one's experience. And part of that experience is just sensing the body there and being aware of the body. So we're not as much aware of what's going on around us 
as being aware of the, the sense of the physical body. So we're still operating. We're not in a coma. We're, not, we're actually extremely lucid, maybe the most lucid, and able to perform regular functions. So for example, I, I have the experience of body and mind separation quite often. And so sometimes I can be sitting on my couch in my living room and I make my way to go, let's say, put a dish uh, in the sink or to wash a dish. And so I'll get up from the sofa. But it, normally when we get up from a sofa, it's like I am getting up from the sofa, right? It's just you getting up, right? In this situation where there's body and mind separation, it's, it's seeing things more in the way that they actually are. And the way that it actually is, is it's not you getting up from the sofa. That's, that's an idea that we have in, involved in some imagery and memory. But in the actual moment of, of, of sensing getting up, it's a body getting up, right? The mind isn't getting up. The mind is, is sort of using the body, right? So the mind decides it's got to go put the dish away. It has some sort of an impulse, a desire. And then it orders this body to get up. And then the body has to move and go to perform the whatever action that the mind decided and the thoughts came up with that we should go do. And so the, the, the feeling of it is when moving, walking, and performing different functions, moving the hands around, the feeling is that this body is something that is being used in order to perform functions but the body isn't me. It's just something that's being used, borrowed, uh, might be the sense of it. And in some cases, the body can seem like a, a bit of a burden. Uh, it seems like a burden in the sense that it has to be taken care of. It has to be fed. You got to brush its teeth. It, it, uh, is something you have to make sure the appearance is presentable. Uh, you want to, you have to, I, like right now I have to talk to, for you to communicate what I would like to say to you. And I can't just send you the imagery mind to mind, right? I have to use this body. So my mouth has to go up and I have to make this mouth move up and down and the, the tongue and the vibrations coming out of the throat. And I have to put some weight and some burden onto this body force it and use it uh, in order to accomplish what I'm trying to accomplish. And that's what's uh, an insight that is we're able to observe when we're able to see more realistically what the body is, right? When we pay attention to the body, we can see that it's clearly a physical thing, right? A bunch of mush and blood and bones and tissue. Right? And when our thoughts are not running the show and we're able to see things clearly as they are, we'll see that there is no me in this body. The body is just a physical mass and it doesn't claim to be you at all. In fact, even when the body's in pain, it's not really the body that's in pain. It's, it's a mental um, phenomenon. The, the physical, even physical pain, right? The body doesn't care that it has physical pain, right? We care, or what we think is us, the mind does. The body doesn't care that there's physical pain. The body doesn't care if the room is too hot or too cold, right? The body is just, it senses it, but it has no claim that this is bad, this is good. The body doesn't care about sickness. The body doesn't care about dying. Right? It's just this physical thing that's going through different states and different functions. And it's the mind, within the mind, that not liking and caring and a bunch of thoughts and imagery about how to make things better or wishing it was different, that that, that all happens in the mind. So when we're observing our own body and mind, we can get a sense of the distinction clearly between body and mind, and we can see that we aren't the body and I tried to describe a bit of what that feels like when we're not, when we're not the body. I have some really profound experiences of being not the body sometimes that uh, extend themselves when my meditation is really good. 
and my uh, mindfulness practice is working well and, and Vipassana practice where the experience is sustained uh, but it's not intentional but the experience is sustained of walking around for a long time with the body and mind clearly showing themselves as two separate things and sometimes it can get so separate not distance wise but just in understanding wise the 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 understanding is extremely clear that the body is just this physical thing and there's no identity in it at all and when that gets really strong when the the sort of separation of mind and body get really strong the body almost appears disposable now because we're wise and not feeling animosity in such a state it's not like we're going to do anything to harm the body however there's no fear about pain there's no fear about death the fear the death and the pain completely feel like they're just going to happen to the physical thing and the mental thing will will continue and it's a very liberating uh, and blissful experience to be free it, even just for a while of the burden of believing that we are this body because this body if we think about it reflect on it is so much of our struggle and our suffering is involved consciously and subconsciously in believing we are the body right we don't want the body sick we don't want it in pain we don't want it to die and then on a micro moment level we have an itch and we have a scratch and we have a bad back and we're adjusting and scratching and shifting and cracking our neck and and massaging our shoulders and and trying to get shoes that work better and and you know we would do all these things anyway like even in these experiences of separate mind and body I'd do these things anyway uh, but the burden on the mind of this being me it, it, instead the burden is reduced to something that needs to be done or needs to be taken care of part of the duty of being alive uh, but not the the weight and pain of this thing being me that's sick I'm sick I'm dying I'm tired I'm hungry I'm in pain right all these things that that cause us suffering on a macro scale or micro scale are are now uh, the weight of them is lifted and sort of seems that the with the weight of it all is sort of in front uh, it's kind of <laughs> you have to have the experience and practice uh, mindfulness for insight or vipassana practice to be able to uh, see these th things in your own experience of the body and mind separation so it's quite a different experience a very powerful and enlightening experience that is quite different from the out of body experience which out of body is usually unintentional where astral projection and astral travel sometimes can be more intentional. I talk about those in another episode of Buddha School, astral travel and projection. Uh, the out-of-body experience is usually unintentional, usually quite clearly away from the body and a strong sense of identification with I am this mind or we might sense that the, the that there's a truth about an eternal soul which actually isn't true but you could say that it's an intermediate level of understanding that it's more true than I am the body but still there's more work to be done to uncover the the whole truth uh, and uh, a lot of people fall into that issue where they have a really powerful spiritual experience like an out-of-body experience and then believe that heaven is eternal or the soul is eternal and these types of things which they don't really have enough evidence for yet they just can sense that yes the body is something that can be uh, the body is something sort of disposable that uh, life definitely continues uh, after the body after we're done uh, 
uh, with this body. But it goes uh, far deeper than that. And uh, in Buddhism, they go really, really far within it. And the Buddha even said that those that haven't learned from the Buddha or the Buddha's teachings can have experiences of not being their body. That's a relatively common thing. But what's needed for enlightenment is to also see that you are not your mind. And so that's an important continuation after believing that you are your mind or essence or soul, that there's an identity, a separate identity uh, in that as well. So hopefully that helps to give some of the distinction between out of body and body and mind separation. And I'm sure I'll talk about this stuff in more detail later. Please like and subscribe. Feel free to comment or ask a question because your questions could end up discussions in future Buddha School episodes, which would be uh, a pleasure to interact with all of you. So thank you for listening and we'll see you next time.